Yo, what's going on YouTube? Energenic here, back with another video. So in today's video, guys, we're gonna be doing something interesting. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be ranking all of the spotlight reward players. So when I say the spotlight reward players, I'm not talking about all of these amethysts and rubies here. I'm talking about just the five pink diamonds. Jason Kidd, Jeremy Lin, Dwight Howard, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Andre Iguodala. So obviously I got all these guys up to their highest points, their highest versions. And basically I'm just gonna be ranking them from worst to best. So just to see, you know, who should you grind for? Who should you focus on? Because I know a lot of you guys may not have all of these guys up to pink diamond. Maybe some of you don't even have one of them up to pink diamond. And if there's any one that you wanna get, then you, you know, you can learn that from this video. But we're just gonna rate them one, or we're gonna rank them from five to one, and let's just get started into this. So, I think it's very unanimous that the worst of all of these guys is Andre Iguodala, and that's not to say he's bad, but he has to be the worst of all of these players, just considering he's the, he was the first one that came out. Um, and just taking a look, you can see he's he's a good player, like 92 driving layup. 89 draw foul, 88 close shot. His mid range is only 83, three point only 82, which is a little bit, you know, lacking, but that goes up with the coach. 84 three throw, bro, I can't even talk. 84 free throw, and then 95 driving dunk. Then his passing is good 86 ball handle, 87 pass IQ, 84 pass accuracy. His defense is really good 90 block or 90 steal. And, and 95 perimeter defense, 80 interior defense, which is good too, because he's like 6'6". Six, six. And then his rebounding is just whatever. His speed, 89, speed of ball, 85, acceleration, 88, vertical, 95. Lateral quickness, 95, and pass reception, 94. So what he excels at is slashing and defense, and he can shoot the ball a little bit too when he's open. Now let's look at his badges. So out of all of the spotlight players, he has the least amount of Hall of Fame badges, nine, but he does have 30 on gold. So let's take a look at what these are. Clutch shooter, showtime, fast break finisher, contact finisher, consistent finisher, trapper, tireless defender, off ball pass, and pick dodger in Hall of Fame. Not any badges that really stand out to me, honestly, for, for the Hall of Fame ones. When he first came out, I expected him to have clamps, but he didn't, which was a letdown. He does have it on gold, though, and we're going to run through his gold badges. We're not going to go through every single one. We're just going to point out some notable ones because it's a lot. But you can see Dimer, he has chased on artists, clamps. Interceptor, Intimidator, Pogo Stick, Ankle Breaker, Acrobat, Difficult Shots, Corner Specialist, Downhill, Needle Threader, Quick First Step, Space Creator, Stop and Go, Unpluckable, Catch and Shoot, Green Machine, Hot Zone Hunter, Pump Fake, Maestro, and Quick Draw. So he has good shooting badges. He has them on gold. He has good dribbling badges. You see the Unpluckable, Stop and Go, and Space Creator. So he's a good player. He's definitely a good player. Um, for somebody whose team is really lacking, you can use you can use yourself an Andre Iguodala. But for somebody who has a team like me, who like you know has a whole bunch of pink diamonds and opals, then he's not really useful. Now, for number four, I think we have to go with Dwight Howard. Now I made a video comparing Dwight Howard and Kareem. I do think Kareem is better than Dwight Howard, but if you want to see that video where I just compare the two of them, like head to head, I will put a card on the screen, you can press it and you can go watch that video. But we're just gonna look at Dwight Howard right here. You can see he is 6'11", he's a center. He can only play the center position, which is also something that hinders him. Then taking a look at his attributes, 85 driving layup, 94 post hook, 92 post moves. Um, so his post moves are good on paper, but not something that I typically ever use. I never use them to score in the post, really. I would just do like standing dunks, you know, putbacks off rebounds, things like that. I never really tried to post up with him just because, I don't know, for some reason it didn't feel too effective. But his draw foul is 95, close shot 96. His mid range is 79, 79 which is decent, but he was kind of inconsistent from there. Obviously, he's not going to be able to shoot threes. Free throw 79. His release for the free throw is really good, so that makes up for the 79 free throw only. Standing and driving dunk are both 97. Of course, he's going to be very athletic. Then his block is 98, and his interior defense is 94. Great interior defender. Great rebounder as well. Offensive rebound 98, defensive 98. 
and then speed 87 speed with ball 63 for a center is good 87 acceleration 97 vertical 97 strength and then 92 pass reception his lateral quickness is 75 but he's a center so that's okay now looking at his badges he's got 11 hall of fame badges 14 gold and one silver for the hall of fame we've got showtime pick and roller back down punisher post move lockdown pogo stick rebound chaser moving truck defensive leader box lob city finisher and rim protector now i do like his hall of fame badges you know he's got the box the rim protector defensive leader the rebound chaser the post move lockdown like those are all ones that i like now for the gold Chase down artist, dream shake, fast break finisher, heart crusher, intimidator, put back boss, drop stepper, post spin technician, relentless finisher, tireless defender, worm, cross key scorer, consistent finisher, and contact finisher. Then he's got brick wall on silver. So decent badges from him. Can't complain about the badges. He has like some of the most important badges that you really want in a big man, like the defense and rebounding ones. So you can't really complain. Definitely a good card. I just recently took him off my team because I got better players, but. You know, he was on my team for a decent amount of time. But like I said, the fact that he can only put the center position definitely hinders him. Now, we're going to get into the top three. This is where it starts to get a little bit a little bit tough. So, I'm going to have to go with... Man, this is tough, man. But I think I know, I think I know my answer. I'm going to have to go with Kareem as number three. And the reason why I say Kareem at number three is because he's really good, guys. Don't get me wrong. Kareem is amazing. You see at the bottom, he's got 13 Hall of Fame badges, 13 gold, and two silver. He's really good. And I, I still use him on my team, but he comes off the bench now. But he's really good. So let's take a look. Well, first, first off, he's 7'2", which is great. He's very tall. Secondly, his attributes. 88 driving layup, 94 post fade, 99 post hook, 96 post moves. Amazing in the post. One of the best post players in the game, hands down. 84 draw foul, 96 close shot, 82 mid range. His three point shot is 55, but to be honest, you can knock some down with him. You really can. I have gotten some greens with him from three. So 80 free throw, 95 standing dunk, 85 driving dunk. And then for his block, he, is, he only has an 88 block, but he will make up for it because in his badges and you'll see his interior defense is 90 his rebounding 93 and 95 and then for his speed 86 speed 54 speed with ball i mean he's a big man 86 is 86 acceleration 95 vertical 95 strength and then his pass reception is 85 so let's take a look at his badges now Thir like i said 13 hall of fame 13 gold two silver for hall of fame we've got brick wall dream shake deep hooks which really helps with his post moves that helps a lot post spin technician good for the post scoring cross key scorer drop stepper contact finisher back down punisher post move lockdown great intimidator great defensive leader great rim protector great box great like he really has good hall of fame badges okay now 13 gold lob city finisher heart crusher catch and shoot which is good moving truck rebound chaser quick draw tireless defender worm pick and popper consistent finisher put back boss pick and roller relentless finisher and then for silver we've got break starter and flashy passer so good badges on the man honestly good badges on the man like i said i still use him on my team and he can run the power forward too so i used to have him in a starting lineup him at the power forward and i would have like david robinson at the center now for those of you who are who really don't spend money in the game i mean i don't spend money in the game but for those of you who really don't spend money in the game and don't have as much time as me you can evo pink diamond kareem or, I mean, you can Evo Kareem to a pink diamond and then also Evo Dwight to a pink diamond. Have Kareem at the at the power forward, Dwight at the center, and you'll be a force to be reckoned with, honestly. But for me, I used to have Kareem at the power forward and, and then I had David Robinson at the center. But then I got Hakeem Olajuwon, who was better than Kareem. So I put Hakeem Olajuwon at the four and David Robinson at the five. Kareem comes off the bench. So now we're getting into the top two. This right here... These are definitely the best two spotlight players. And I actually just made a comparison video about them. So you guys would know my thoughts if you saw that video already. But we're going to just talk about each one of these guys individually and Jason Kidd and Jeremy Lin. Now, if I'm going to, I have to go number two, I got to say Jason Kidd. 
and so that leaves an obvious number one but I say Jason Kidd because just looking here without even pressing R3 to view the player card just looking right here you look at Jason Kidd you see at the bottom he's got 22 Hall of Fame badges badges 11 gold and one silver when you look at Jeremy he's got 17 Hall of Fame badges and 31 gold so yes Jason has more Hall of Fame badges but Jeremy has more total badges than Jason Kidd because 17 plus 31 is 48 if you do 22 plus 11 that's 33 plus one silver is 34 badges so Jeremy has a lot more badges than Jason Kidd but we're gonna look at Jason Kidd because that's not I'm not trying to discredit him he's really really good Jason Kidd is amazing so we'll take a look here 96 driving and layup uh, his post moves are decent for a point guard 70s across the board but honestly I don't really take that into account because I don't post up with point guards at all 96 close shot 92 mid range 93 84 free throw a good shooter not a great shooter but a good shooter somebody who can get the job done 95 ball handle 95 pass IQ 94 pass accuracy really good facilitating very good 98 steel 98 perimeter defense 95 interior defense that is what is amazing about this card this card is the best defensive point guard in the game there's no doubt about it okay there's no other point guard that you can get in packs who's better defensively than this card there's no other point guard currently as of january 28th 2020 there's no other point guard that is a better defender than jason kidd fully evo then his rebounding is good too for a point guard who's 6'4", 75 offensive, 78 defensive. Athleticism, 90, 97 speed across the board. Strength, ni or 79 for a point guard. Stamina, 98. Lateral quickness, 98. Pass perception, 95. Amazing, amazing. Now, when we take a look at the badges, the most Hall of Fame badges for a point guard in the game besides Tony Parker. But let's take a look. Unpluckable, catch and shoot, tight handles, acrobat, teardropper, stop and go, ankle breaker, space creator, quick first step, dimer, pickpocket, pick dodger, clamps, defensive leader, needle threader, and interceptor, intimidator, slithery finisher, contact finisher, tireless defender, trapper, and consistent finisher. So, what is the main strengths of this card in terms of the badges? He's got the defensive ones, he's got the, the dribbling ones or the playmaking ones whatever you want to say or he has both of those with the dimer and then like the space crater angle breaker and all that then he also has the finishing ones contact finisher consistent finisher slithery finisher and so he, he's well rounded now I expected him to have floor general on hall of fame just knowing Jason Kidd and knowing how good he was in real life but he has it on gold what can you do really then he's got lightning reflexes, downhill, handles for days, heart crusher, pass fake, maestro, lob city passer, flashy passer, relentless finisher, difficult shots, quick draw, and then silver he's got pogo stick. So really, really, really good card, but I can't give him the edge over Jeremy Lin because Jeremy Lin has more badges than him. And I think that's what it comes down to, honestly. So we're now we're going to look at Jeremy Lin, and it's crazy because... The order of these, of how good these cards literally is in proportion to when they came out. So, Andre Iguodala was the first one to come out, and he's the worst one. Then it was Dwight Howard, and he's the second worst one. Then it was Kareem, he's the third worst. I don't know why I'm saying worst, but then Jason Kidd, fourth, and then Jeremy Lin, obviously, is the best one. So, let's take a look at Jeremy Lin. So, he's only 6'3", but that's like the perfect height for a point guard, in my opinion, in, in 2K, 6'3". 94 driving layup, 94 draw foul, 96 close shot, 93 mid range, 92 three. Now that goes up to with my diamond coach, which is Steve Kerr, goes up to 90, 97. So honestly, great three point shooter. 90 free throw, 85 driving dunk, can shoot and can dunk. He does some pretty, he's some pretty good dunks. Impressive, honestly. He was never like that in person. I don't, I've never seen him do flashy dunks ever. But 2K want to make him fake, so I can't complain. For passing, 92 ball handle, 95 pass IQ, 94 pass accuracy, amazing. Defense, great defensively, 88 perimeter defense and 88 steal. So those are amazing. Not better than Jason Kidd, but still amazing. Then his speed, 94 speed across the board. Then he's got 85 vertical and then his lateral quickness is 92. Pass perception, 88. You know, very good on the athletic end. And we're going to look at his badges now. So, 
17 Hall of Fame badges, 31 gold. I'm not gonna read all the gold because it's way too much, but for the Hall of Fame, we're gonna go, we're gonna see he has Floor General, Catch and Shoot, Range Extender, Dead Eye, Acrobat, Teardropper, Relentless Finisher, Clutch Shooter, Unpluckable, Quick First Step, Dimer, Downhill, Slithery Finisher, Giant Slayer, Clamps, Contact Finisher, Consistent Finisher. So he has all the main badges that you need on Hall of Fame, the Floor General, the Catch and Shoot, the Range Extender, like, He's got the shooting ones, he's got the defensive ones, he's got the playmaking ones. Like, what else can you ask? He's got the finishing ones, like, he has them all. He has, a, he has it all. Now, for the gold ones, I'll just point out the important. Interceptor, Intimidator, Pogo Stick, Tireless Defender, Defensive Leader, Chase Down Artist, Pick Dodger, Bailout, Pick Pocket, Needle Threader, Space Creator, Stop and Go, Ankle Breaker, Difficult Shots, Hot Zone Hunter, Hot Start, Quick Draw, Corner Specialist, Volume Shooter. So, you can see he has great badges. He has amazing badges, he has amazing attributes, and without a doubt, I think this is the best spotlight player out of all of the five. So, you know, for those of you who are wondering, oh, I only have mine at a Sapphire or Ruby or whatever, who should you grind out first? This is an easy decision to make because Jeremy Lin is the best one out of all of these cards yet he has the easiest evolution requirements thank you 2k I mean you, you gotta say that's a W for them making him as easy as it was to evolve not to say he was super easy because the pink diamond to get him from the last diamond to the pink diamond was a grind you had to do 1600 points 800 assists and play 60 games and make 100 threes but it's easier than Jason Kidd and all the these other guys were the hardest one is probably Andre Iguodala because you've got to get 900 rebounds at the end plus you got to get 600 rebounds at the stage before that so man bro that was tough man and for him to be the worst one and he has like the hardest evo requirements don't focus on Andre Iguodala unless unless you're like really lacking a small far a small forward slash shooting guard focus on Jeremy Lin focus I'd say focus on Jeremy Lin um, you can do Jason Kidd, you can do Kareem, and then Dwight and Andre. If you still want to do them, do them last. But focus on Jeremy Lin, Jason, and Kareem, and you'll be good to go. Now, if you want, if you want to just focus on Jeremy Lin and Kareem because Jason is already a point guard and you already have one, you can do Jeremy Lin and Kareem, or whatever, whatever you want to do. I'm just giving you advice and I'm just trying to, you know, give you guys the best way to go about it. For those of you who don't want to spend any money but still want to have a good team, it is possible. You just got to put in the time. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Uh, today we hit 900 subscribers, which but this video is gonna go up tomorrow. So you know it's gonna be weird, but yeah. Thank you so much for allowing me to hit 900 subscribers, man. We are on the road to 1K. That's it, bro. Like, bro, it's crazy, bro. We about to hit 1K, man. Yo, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, just do me a favor and subscribe, man. Also hit the like button. And 1K, man, I, I can't believe I'm saying that, bro. That's crazy. But yeah, with that said, man, I'm going to catch you guys in the next video, man. Peace out.